Hi, my name is Russ Baker. In this section, we'll be looking at how to solve linear equations and confirm those solutions with a graphing calculator. The analytic method of solving linear equations is performed by combining the distributive property, the multiplication, addition, and subtraction properties, and combining like terms to make the original equation look simpler and simpler until a solution is finally at hand. We will consider only linear equations in this section. The basic form of a linear equation is ax plus b equals 0, where a is not equal to 0. Another way of writing this in a more general form is with function notation. f of x equals ax plus b. And again, a is not equal to 0. Finding a 0 of a function is the same as finding the solution of the equation. You just replace the f of x with a 0. Some equations involve fractions for most problems. That's done, solved by removing the denominators by multiplying the common denominator. Here's how it works. We're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the common denominator, which is 12. In doing so, that makes the denominators cancel out, and we're left with 4 times 2x plus 1 plus 3 times x minus 1 equals 13 times 6. Now we'll use the distributive property to get 8x plus 4 plus 3x minus 3 equals 78. We'll combine like terms 11x plus 1 equals 78. Then 11x equals 77. And dividing both sides by 11 will give us our answer, x equals 7. We really need to check this to make sure that it checks in our original equation. And to do that, we must go back, and then we'll write 2. 7 plus 1 over 3 plus 7 minus 1 over 4 is equal to 13 halves. 14 plus 1 over 3 and 7 minus 1 is 6, 4 equals 13 halves. And here we'll get 14 plus 1 is 15 thirds plus 6 fourths equals 13 halves. And then we'll see that 15 thirds is 5, and 6 fourths is 3 halves. 5 halves is 5 is 10 halves, plus 3 halves is indeed. 13 halves, and our problem does check. Let's verify the results that we got analytically with a graphing calculator. We'll go to our graphing calculator to the y equals menu, and we'll enter the le left side of the equation first. Parentheses 2x plus 1 divided by 3 plus, parentheses, x minus 1, parentheses, divided by 4. Then we'll let y2 be 13 halves. Now we're going to graph that using zoom 6 to make sure that we're in the standard screen. The intersection of the two graphs is the solution to the equation. To find that 
solution, we can do second calc 5 intersect. Our first curve is y1, our second curve is y2, so we hit enter each time there. Then we use our arrow keys to go as close to that intersection point as we can get. That's our guess, and we hit enter. And the calculator tells us that our answer is y equals 6.5, x equals 7. And we said that 7 was our answer. We can also do this in another manner using the graphing calculator. We can go back to the y equals menu. We can turn off y1, turn off y2 by putting our cursor over the equal signs. And then going to y3 and making that the difference of the two graphs. We can do that using our vars menu and pushing over to y vars and function and 1. Then we want to subtract y2, so we go through the same process again, function y2. Now when we graph y1 minus y2, the solution to the equation will be the x-intercept. Now to find that point, now to find the coordinates of that point, we'll use second calc 2, 0. Our left bound can be 6, or we can use our calculator arrow keys. Our right bound could be 8, or we can use our arrow keys again. And then we get as close as we can, hit enter, and we see that our solution is 7, 0 checking our equation. Now solve this equation and check it using analytic means. You may want to eliminate the decimals or not as you desire. Turn the tape back on when you've completed the problem. Three, two. Here's the solution to the problem. Our first step was to remove the decimals by multiplying through by 100. That would make this 40x plus 60 times 100 minus x equals 45 times 100. The multiplying by a 100 will not change the 100 minus x inside. Now we'll use the distributive property to remove the parentheses. We can combine like terms to get 6,000 minus 20x equals 4,500. Then we want to subtract 6,000 from both sides. And divide both sides by negative 20. That will give us a positive answer of 75. You should be able to check your work analytically. We're going to go ahead and go to our graphing calculator and check our solution using the intersection of graphs method. We've already placed the equations in our y1 and y2 menu. And we'll go ahead, we've also adjusted our window so that we'll be able to see our equation solution on our screen. We'll push graph. and we'll see that the two graphs intersect. That intersection point is a solution to our equation. We can find it by second calc 5 intersect. First curve is y1, second curve is y2. We'll use our arrow keys to go over to a point near the intersection, 
hit enter, and we have our confirmation that X is indeed 75. Now we're going to uh, use our graphing calculator in a little different way to solve this more complicated equation. We have the equation 2 pi x plus the cube root of 4 equals 0.5 pi x minus the square root of 28. We'll solve this problem using the equation solver in your graphing calculator. We go back to the graphing calculator to y1, clear out what we had there before, and then we'll go ahead and enter those equations in the graphing calculator. 2 pi x plus the cube root. We'll go to math function for that. 4 cube root of 4, end of parentheses. And that will be our equation 1. Our equation 2 is 0.5 pi x minus the square root of 28. And what we're interested in now is y1 minus y2. That would be equal to 0. Our equation solver is in the math menu. It's all the way down at the bottom. It's choice 0, where it says solver. We push Enter there. And it says equation 0 equals. Remember, we set up our y equals menu so that y1 minus y2, which is what we want to have solved, is in the y3 menu. So we'll go back to our calculator, and we'll push vars, y vars, function, and then we'll push 3 for y3. We'll now push Enter. Although 2 is not our answer, it's sort of our guess, uh, we can now have the calculator solve the problem by pushing alpha, enter. You see it says solve there. And it comes up with a solution to the problem. Negative 1.46, rounded to the nearest hundredth. In all the examples we've done so far, there has been just one answer. These are called conditional equations. There are two other types of equations we need to consider. One has no solution at all and is called a contradiction. The other has an infinite solution and are, they are called identities. A contradiction occurs when in solving an equation, you get an obviously false statement, something like 1 equals 0. Graphically, that makes the two functions parallel. There is no solution because there's no intersection point. An identity occurs when, in solving the equation, an obviously true statement occurs, such as 6 equals 6. Graphically, the two graphs coincide, so the solution is an infinite set. Let's take a look at an equation that is an example of one of these two. If 6 times 2x plus 1 equals 4x plus 8 times the quantity x plus 3 fourths, the first thing we would do to solve this equation is remove the parentheses. 12x plus 6 equals 4x plus 8x, and 3 fourths times 8 is 6. Then we'll combine some like terms. 12x plus 6 equals 12x plus 6. You may see, even at this point, that this is going to be in a true statement. We'll subtract 12x from both sides to try to get the x's on the same side, and we'll wind up with 6 equals 6. Well, this obviously true statement would lead us to believe that this is, in fact, an identity. And its solution set is infinite. Now let's consider another equation. 
7 times the quantity 2 minus the quantity 3 plus 4x minus 2x equals 9 plus 2 times the quantity 1 minus 15x. Once again, we'll do some removing of parentheses. First inside, minus 3 minus 4x minus 2x equals 9 plus 2 minus 30x. Now we'll combine some terms. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 minus 4x minus 2x equals 11 minus 30x. We'll remove these brackets. Negative 7 minus 28x minus 2x equals 11 minus 30x. Combine the x terms. Negative 7 minus 30x equals 11 minus 30x. Perhaps you can see right now that this is going to be a contradiction. Adding 30 to both sides gives us the obviously false statement that negative 7 is equal to 11. So this is a contradiction, and there is no solution to this particular problem. Let's confirm this contradiction with our graphing calculator. Going to the graphing calculator and pushing the y1, you can see that we have the y1 equation typed in already. We have the y2 equation typed in already. And we've adjusted our window so that we'll be able to see that a little better. Pushing the graph, we see that we get two, appears to be two straight lines and that they appear to be parallel. That would confirm our con solution that we have a contradiction. Since the graphs do not appear to intersect, there is no solution to this problem. Let's look over the major points of this section so that when you're doing your own work at home, you can uh, look over this material and know what you're supposed to be uh, mastering. The major points of this section are solving a linear equation by using the distributive property or addition or multiplication property, to clear a fraction or decimal in an equation by multiplying by the least common denominator, and that we can do graphical support for our solutions in two different ways. The intersection of graphs method, the x-intercept method. Some graphing calculators have a solver function that will allow you to solve the analytic solution of equations by themselves. You should practice these skills until you are proficient at each one. The properties of linear inequalities look a lot like the properties for equations. If, an, if A is less than B, we can add the same quantity to both sides of the inequality and it remains true. That's the addition or subtraction property. The multiplication property says if C is larger than 0 and A is less than B, then their products stay in the same order. The different thing about inequalities is that if you multiply both sides by a negative number, C less than 0, then the inequality sign will reverse. Let's solve an inequality and see how that process works. Here's our, equa our inequality. x plus 2 times the quantity, negative x plus 4, minus 3 times the quantity, x plus 5, is less than negative 4. As if it were an equation, we'd remove these parentheses using the distributive property. x minus 2x plus 8 minus 3x minus 15 is less than negative 4. Let's combine some terms now. x minus 2x minus 3x, negative 4x, and 8 minus 15 negative 7, less than negative 4. Let's add 7 to both sides. Negative 4x is less than adding 7 to both sides. We'd get uh, 3. And then dividing both sides by negative 4 
will turn the inequality around and give us our answer of negative three-fourths. The solutions to such a inequality may be supported graphically in a similar manner to that of linear equations. Let's do the intersection of graphs method on this particular problem. We'll go to our graphing calculator, and in the Y1 menu, we'll place the left side. X plus 2 times negative X plus 4 minus 3 times x plus 5, and then y2 will simply be negative 4. Zoom 6. Now, in this case, what we are looking for is a place where one graph is below the other. We want y1 to be below less than negative 4. We'll first find the intersection point, intersect, first curve, second curve, guess, and we see that that is negative 0.75. That's the negative 3 fourths solution, part of the solution we had before. Now you'll notice that if we trace y1, that it is below the line y equals negative 4 to the right. That confirms that x must be larger than negative 3 fourths. We can also write our answer in interval notation. And we can do that in this way. Parentheses, negative 3 fourths, infinity. We can also confirm our solution using the x-intercept method. Let's go to our graphing calculator. We have to turn off y1 and y2, and then go to y3. We use our VARES menu to put in y1 minus y2. VARES, y VARES function, y1 minus VARES, y VARES function, y2. Now we can graph y3. Find the x-intercept. Okay. Zero. Uh, our left bound we might put in as uh, negative two. Right bound could even be zero. Our guess could be negative one. And it tells us that that point is negative 0.75 or negative three fourths. Now, if we trace, what we're looking at now is places where our y1 minus y2 is below zero. And again, we see that the solution would be anything from negative 0.375 up to infinity, all the way to the right. It's important to understand that the calculator does not show you whether or not the endpoints of an interval is a member of the solution set to the inequality. Here's how that's done. If it's in less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to inequality, then we'll include the intercept. And we would, in interval notation, use square brackets on each end. We never use square brackets at infinity because you can never actually get to infinity. If it's a strictly less than or a strictly greater than zero function, then the intercept is excluded. And again, we will use the parentheses instead. Now we'll look at another problem. We'll get it started and then have you finish the problem itself. 
solve the inequality, negative one half x plus 0.7 x is less than or equal to five. The first thing we'd want to do is clear the fractions and decimals. And we can do that by multiplying both sides by 10. This will become negative 5x plus 7x is less than or equal to 50. Now stop the tape and complete the analytic solution. We'll write your answer in interval notation. Here's the rest of the solution. Combining like terms, 2x is less than or equal to 50. Dividing both sides by 2, x is less than or equal to 25. If x is less than or equal to 25, the interval solution would be everything from negative infinity up to and including 25. And so we'll put a square bracket on the end of that problem. Let's try another problem for you to solve on your own. This problem should be solved using the x-intercept method with y1, y2, and y3 typed into your calculator as shown. Since your results will be irrational, you'll have to round your endpoints off to the nearest hundredth. Turn the tape back on to see the solution. To solve this inequality using the x-intercept method, we'll go to our graphing calculator and enter the left side in y1. 2.3 pi. Pi plus the cube root of seven. We'll enter the left, si the right side in y two. Point six pi x minus the square root of twenty one. We'll turn y two and y1 off, we already have entered the y1 minus y2 in the y3 menu as we've done before. Now we'll graph. We'll find the, the zero second calc zero, where the left bound looks like it's about maybe six, and the right bound is maybe eight, and then we'll make a guess. So our solution here is that from the point 7.28, and we want to know where that's less than zero, which is to the right, our solution would be from 7.28 to infinity. Often we deal with compound inequalities. One of the most common of those is a three-part inequality. An expression is in between the two inequality symbols. Solving these three-part inequalities is done exactly like a, a normal two-part inequality, except that the same thing must be done now to all three parts instead of just two. Let's take a look at one right now. Here we have negative three is less than or equal to the expression x minus four over negative five, and that is less than four. To solve this three-part inequality, we would first look at the expression and see that we'd like to clear the fraction by multiplying through by negative five. When we multiply or divide by a negative, the inequality will in fact 
reverse. We'll get positive 15 larger than or equal to x minus 4 larger than negative 20. Now we can add 4 to both sides, x, 15 plus 4 is 19, and negative 20 plus 4 is negative 16. We'll often reverse this to make it easier to see, putting them in numerical order, negative 16 is less than x is less than or equal to positive 19. If we would like to solve this problem with our graphing calculator, we would do graph each part in the same way previously, only now we'll have three. The leftmost part is negative three. The expression in the center would be y2. And the rightmost part would be our y3. Let's enter those and see what the graphic solution would look like. We'll erase what we have in our calculator and enter negative 3 for y1, the expression x minus 4 divided by negative 5 in y2, and 4 for y3. We'll need to fix our window so that it's negative 20 to 25. And let's see what it looks like. Now, in this instance, our solution actually is in between the two horizontal lines. We could get our intersection points by doing intersect, where our fr we could do first curve, second curve, that's y1 and y2, and then the intersection of those two graphs is, as we guessed before, 19. That was confirms our solution. The second intersect, we want to do y2 and y3, and then find that intersection point. Well, there. And we see that that's negative 16. Our solution, then, is anything in between the two lines. In summary, inequalities are not all that much different than solving equations. We know that we can, if we do multiplication or division by a negative, it reverses the inequality. Other properties remain the same. To solve a three-part inequality, we need to do steps on all three parts. We can show graphical support for our analytic solutions by graphing both sides, by graphing the difference, or in the case of a three-part graph, graphing all three parts of the three-part inequality and looking in between. You should practice these problem sets until you're proficient at each one of these skills.